Hello and welcome you guys. My name is Mary Baird Wilcox, CSEP with the Simplifiers and the Simplifiers podcast. And I am super excited to be here with you guys today. We are talking CSEP, you guys. Woo! Don't get too excited. I know, I know. Stop yourself. Um, if you've never used GoToWebinar before, I want to give you guys a little bit of housekeeping of how this funny little program works. Um, first off, if you are here live, please, please, please type down the bottom right. Do you see there's like a little chat box there? Let us know that you're actually here. Um, tell us your name and the company you work for and um, yeah, what city or what chapter you are based in as well. That would be amazing. Um, so we can start to see who here is on the call live today. All the people that missed the live call, I'm telling you, they're missing out. However, if for whatever reason you need to bounce off, you too can watch the replay later down the line as well. Um, so, hello, welcome. Let's see who is here on the call. Make sure to say in the chat box if you are here and live. Um, that just lets me know that you, um, that you can hear me and that you can see me and that all the technology is working in our favor. Um, so yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're gonna give it just another minute or so as people start streaming in. Um, so yeah. Housekeeping on GoToWebinar. Here's how this thing is going to work. You see there's a little chat box down below, but then there's also a little place where you can ask a question. So ask a question there. If anything pops up, I'm going too fast, or um, yeah, you just have any questions on the stuff that I'm talking about, um, that's what I'm here for. The next 90 minutes, we are talking all CSCP, and I'm actually going to go into some stuff that I don't think you've ever heard before in a webinar or a training class about CCP. So I'm so super duper excited to do this with you guys. So yeah, it looks like we've got Ruth here. Um, excellent, hi Ruth. Uh, Chelsea Roy is on the call today. Hi Chelsea. Jeff, Jeff Hudson from the Ilea Austin chapter. Thanks again for all your help to coordinate this, Jeff. Really appreciate you. Armando is here from San Antonio. Armando, you have no idea how much I miss tacos, like beyond miss the tacos. Uh, I live in Nottingham, England now, um, though you couldn't tell by my accent. There are sad tacos here, very sad tacos. Um, great, Chelsea says she can hear me and see me. Excellent, Denise Rocha uh, from the Austin Chapters, amazing. Veronica Gonzalez, hello, hello. Amber Fitzgerald from Houston, awesome. All my Texas peeps are here now. Great. Anna, great. Hi, Anna. How's it going? I'm glad you're here as well. Okay, so you now know how to use the question box and go to webinar. Go ahead and pat yourself on the back there. Amazing. Um, that's where you can ask, ask me questions in real time. This is not some weird kind of webinar that's not re that's recorded and looks like it's real, but it's not real. No, it's actually real. I am actually a real person and I'm here helping you guys out. Uh, second bit is that I would like to recommend to you guys is grab a pen and paper to take notes. Any old piece of paper will go and do fine um, because we've got to cover a lot of ground today and I want to make sure um, you're taking good copious notes on, on it all. Um, yeah, uh, and that's pretty much it. I think we also have a few people joining us um, from overseas as well, so that should be really exciting. Um, all right, you guys, if you don't know already, we're talking about how to make the most of CSCP. This is not gonna be just a one-on-one course about what is the CSCP, why is this a good idea? Yes, I will talk about those things, don't get me wrong, um, but I actually really wanna help you guys learn how to prepare for the test, and ultimately, once you pass the exam and get your CSCP designation, let's talk about new and innovative ways of how to actually bring in more business, because that, at the end of the day, is what makes a business thrive, is cash in the bank, Clients queuing up uh, out the door, right? Can I get an amen? Okay. Now, if you don't know who I am, by the way, hello, my name is Mary. Uh, yes, I am a CSCP, and I founded the Simplifiers way, way, way back in 2003 in Austin, Texas. Um, you know, when we first started the company, uh, it was an events management firm. So we produced very large scale uh, corporate events for um, some pretty amazing clients over the years, people like Facebook and Google and Microsoft and TEDx and all of that. Uh, and only then did we recently 
pivot the company just about four years ago to work more in the B2B space. So we now mentor creative entrepreneurs all over the world um, to help you guys simplify your small business strategy and overcome the overwhelm because Lord knows there is a lot that's on your plate and you're trying to do all of it. And you know, just so I can put it out there, if you've not listened to the Simplifiers podcast yet, I highly, highly recommend. Um, I launched that at the beginning of this year and we interview super smart people all over the world who can take one topic either in business or in life and simplify it. So yeah, please tune in to that as well. If you're a current listener to the podcast, let me know in the questions. I'd love to know which was your favorite episode there. Um, what you may also not know about me is that I was the chapter president in the Ilia Austin chapter, what, what, uh, 2011 and 2012. Um, so that whole year, gosh, I cannot believe it. Time goes by so fast. Uh, and I'm very proud to serve now on your board of governors um, and have this will actually be my third year of serving on ILEA's board of governors rolling off this August. So I hope to see you guys all at ILEA Live in Denver. Um, let me know in the question box if you guys are going to ILEA Live, by the way. Um, yes, it's my first time to go to Denver. Uh, well, actually, in a really long time. So looking forward to it. Hey, Rosemary, I see you're here from Tallahassee, Florida. Excellent. Um, great. So yes, this is me. And uh, over the next 84 more minutes, we're going to be talking all about CSCP. Now, I would encourage you if you are a multitasking kind of person, you like to listen to a webinar and you're doing stuff over here and you're doing stuff over there. Hey, if there's some soundbite or something interesting that you loved from today's webinar, uh, tag me, The Simplifiers, uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever you wanna do, um, tell the world about it. And don't forget to use the hashtag MyIlea, M-Y-I-L-E-A. Um, so yeah, tag me on The Simplifiers and tag the hashtag my Ilea, um, we'd love to see you spread the word about you thinking about taking the CSCP, which by the way, that's a big deal, you guys. Um, you know, when I remember when I was just about to consider sitting for my CSCP exam, it was a big, scary decision. Um, so if this is big and scary for you, I hear you, I feel you. And that's again, what today's webinar is all about. Um, so yeah, we are here to dispel any kind of scariness, get you super prepared um, and you know ready to go to take the exam. Ah, yes, so Armando says the entire San Antonio, ILEA San Antonio board will be at ILEA Live. I love hearing that, you guys, that's amazing. Great work. All right, so let's just dive into what we're gonna talk about today. Um, we're gonna save time at the end of the webinar to answer questions, and I think that might work best just to uh, continue the flow. So when a question pops up, stick it into the question mark there, and then at the very, very end, I'll answer all those questions as we go along. Sounds good? Great. So here's what we're gonna cover today. First and foremost, we gotta start with what? What is the CSCP and why should you take the exam? Some of you guys, this may be your very first time of ever even hearing about CSCP. And so, yeah, we're gonna cover the basics. But some of you guys, you're like, yeah, I already know all this stuff. So we're actually gonna go through this stuff fairly quick because what I really wanna spend a lot of time on today is the final four points. The next one, how to set up a thriving CSCP discussion group in your local chapter. This is pivotal to everything. I am a firm believer that you should not study or try to prepare for this test all by yourself. Um, you have to do it in a group, and I'll tell you why in a bit. Uh, we're also gonna give you secrets and inside um, tips on how to prepare for the test and how to be a superhero test taker on the big day. Um, you know, it, for a lot of us, it's been a long while since we've been in school, in college. Can I just? Raise my hand there, yes. So you might be a little bit rusty at taking tests right now, and that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna give you some hints on how to brush up your skills and be really prepared. And then last but not least, what happens if you pass? What happens if you fail? What you should do next? And if you pass, how to make the most of your CSCP designation? Does that sound good, everybody? All right, great, so here's what I'm gonna do. So you're not super distracted by me and my 
funny little webcam. I'm going to stop sharing my webcam right now and just dive into the content that we see here. Does that sound good, guys? Okay, great. Um, and yes, keep those questions rolling. Uh, and I see you guys are rolling in here as well. Oh, good. Looks like David Reed and Jordan Adams are both here from Big Time Creatives. Hey, guys, how's it going? All right, awesome. So, first things first. Captain Obvious, what is the CSEP? It stands for the Certified Special Events Professional. And this really is our designation um, in the ILEA organization and association. This really shows um, who is the cream of the crop, the very best in our industry. Um, you know, so what is the CSCP? This is all about uh, designation. It's all about distinguishing you as an experienced professional um, in the industry, in your city, in your market versus the rest. And it also helps give you a bit of a measurement of your own personal and professional development. Let's be honest, you guys. Um, in the events industry, particularly as a wedding planner or an event planner, there are so many people out there that are like, yeah, I'm a wedding planner. They go buy some business cards, they set up a one-page website, and poof, they're a wedding planner. The reality is, is that are they truly an experienced professional? or not. And I believe that when you step up to the plate and actually take the CSCP exam and, you know, have experience under your belt, this really sets you apart from 90% of the competition that's out there. You are not a Craigslist planner, my friends, um, if you are CSCP certified. So this really sets you apart from the rest. Now, who are the current CSCPs in the world? Well, these are the stats of who currently are out there. And if I'm not mistaken, and I know Tori from the ILEA uh, headquarters is on the call with us today, um, these are the latest. I believe we have 450 CSCPs worldwide. And you know, when I uh, showed you my little who I am slide before, one of the, the great, like, bragging rights that I get to have now that I live in the UK is that I'm one of three CSEPs in all of the UK. I mean, that's quite a big statement to have. Um, and, you know, you too could have something like that in your own city. Hey, I'm one of five in my market or my city. But who, who are the current CSEPs? Well, we represent 10 countries from five different continents all over the world. 80% of CSEPs have over 10 years of experience in the industry. Over 35% of CSEPs own their own business, and more than 27% of CSEPs represent their companies in the events industry. So, I mean, we're talking leaders, we're talking influencers, Influencers, business owners, experts, you name it. Um, those are all certainly um, who are actually currently certified. And I don't mean to scare you here, but the test is hard. And it's meant to be hard for a reason. And the reason, bottom line, is this, is that not everybody can just pass it. And so the very, very core and the very bare minimum, you need to have three years full-time professional employment in the special events industry before you can even qualify as a candidate to sit for the test. So if you've not hit your three-year mark yet and you're on today's call, totally fine. I want you to be aware and put this as a pen in your map for your future career journey, but you have to have at least a minimum of three years full-time professional employment before you can even qualify to, to take the test itself. Make sense? Okay, great. Um, yes, so that's very much at the core of it. But really, why? Why should I become a CSEP? And I love this. I mean, there are five real key reasons to it. Um, it's A, first and foremost, a stamp of approval. Um, so if you're trying to market or solicit your business, CSEP conveys instant credibility to your clients. I mean, it's literally the only certification that signifies broad knowledge across all facets of the special events industry. So think about some of the other certifications that are out there. They're very specific, like certifying as a meeting planner, certifying as a wedding planner. What's nice about the CSEP is that it is overall on all the major core areas of being an events producer, whether that's event planning or rentals, tenting, 
food and beverage, event decor, creative services and entertainment, venue, speaker management, and technical production. I mean, really, it covers a wide range there. And that's incredible for you as well, because once you have that broad knowledge, you really can do great things. I want to put a pin real quick and just a note on this. The CSCP is not just for event planners. And I dare say the people who have taken the CSCP exam and have and had excelled in it and gotten their designation that are not event planners, like that's super impressive to me as an events producer. Like, for example, if my rentals person has his or her CSCP, that tells me a lot about that person's experience level and understanding of how our industry actually works. So if you're sitting on this call thinking, well, I'm not an event planner, should I really take this? I'm a DJ, I'm a mariachi band, I'm a, you know, Lennon's uh, uh, sales rep. I actually highly encourage you guys to get your CSCP designation because it really tells your planners, people like me all over the world, wow, that person knows his or her stuff. So I highly recommend that you do it. Second point is you then become part of an elite network. The 450 CSCPs around the world are truly making meaningful connections. Um, and we have a private Facebook group where we can connect with each other. There are special CSCP only um, sessions at ILEA Live and lots of perks along the way of being part of the inner circle, if you will. I mean, we really truly are um, a global community of CSCPs. And, you know, as it says here, we're also highly motivated live event professionals. You know, this is for me. When I decided, yes, I'm going to go after my CSCP, this is when I really decided it's time to step up. It's time to step up at my game as an event events producer. And really, truly, that was the next level in my career. Um, and yes, it's a big deal when you do become CSEP certified. Next, it's a developmental accelerator. With CSEP, you gain advanced market relevant events industry expertise that truly demonstrates a career long commitment to personal and professional development. Um, you know, I, I have to say that learning um, all the principles behind the CSEP and the content outline, which I'm going to show with you guys in a bit, actually helped me become a better events producer as well. It changed how we, you know, pitch clients, very big clients. Um, and, you know, we, we structured a lot of things differently because of the content outline. So I'm going to talk talk to you a little bit later about how we actually did that at the simplifiers to start nabbing our five and six figure um, client events and, and fees. So this is big stuff here. You know, and it, it goes without saying, there's a bit of swagger that comes along with being able to put the letters CSEP after your name. It's truly a verification of your knowledge, your expertise, and excellence. So, you know, that feels pretty good. Uh, and I love, actually, when I go into other events, conferences, workshops, if I'm speaking, you know, outside of the events industry, if I'm doing a keynote somewhere and it's they're not events people, I love to, you know, make sure that my name on the bill says Mary Baird Wilcock underscore CSEP. And people go, what does that mean? And I get the opportunity to explain to them, well, it means that I'm a certified special events professional. Uh, one in three in the UK. I've done these types of events. We've worked with these types of clients. And, you know, then it, it's an opportunity for a conversation starter, which always is a great thing when you're networking and, you know, talking to new people. And last but not least, it's a collective knowledge. With your CSCP, you're contributing to the industry's overall knowledge base, removing performance uncertainty from clients' mind, and opening up market opportunities. I mean, this truly does become a gateway to new, bigger, better clients, bigger, better budgets to work with, all of those things. It, it definitely unlocks some doors that maybe were closed previously. Okay. Uh, any questions so far, make sure to tap it into the questions in GoToWebinar. And by the way, are you enjoying the webinar so far? I hope so. Um, let me know in the question box. Okay, obviously you've probably seen this before. We, um, the application window is only open four times a year. And so you have to um, apply and pay your fee before you can actually take the exam during the window. Here's my best recommendation for you guys. 
<clears throat> we'll talk about this in in the preparing um, and to, you know how to how to really study and and be prepared for the test. Um, but you know, consider mapping it out well in advance. So if you know that, say, for example, April 15th to the 30th is a super busy season time for you, then don't sit for your exam during your busy season. If you know that uh, July 15th to the 30th is a slower time of the year for you, then okay, map that out for yourself and, and look at your, your year and your bookings ahead uh, for, for the year. Um, don't make this hard on yourselves. I'm all about simplicity, my friends. <laughs> this is the first step for you as well. Um, now, if you're curious, there are, um, testing locations all over the world, um, lots and lots in Canada and the US, um, and quite a few international as well. So if you wanna take a screenshot of this little um, slide here, this is the place where you go to find a location near you in order to take the exam. Yes, great. Right, are you guys ready? This is how, this is what you've been waiting for. This is how to prepare for the test. First and foremost, Here's what the test looks like. Um, and again, I might be sharing insider secrets that you've never heard before, and I'm so glad that you all are here. Part one of the test is all multiple choice, and you are given an hour and a half to complete part one. You get 100 questions, and it's all made up of like vocabulary, different types of event scenarios, and specific knowledge, but they are all multiple choice questions. Now, part two is a written exam, and it, you get three hours to do the written exam part of it. And with the written exam, it's short answer questions. Um, you have a choice of a type of event scenario, and you'll need to make sure to have really great knowledge of how to create a SWOT analysis and a detailed budget. So let's pause there real quick. What's a SWOT analysis? SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, if you've never done a SWOT analysis real quick, let's just talk about that for a hot second. When you go into the written exam portion, I want you to go in with your event planner hat on which may be a little bit tricky for the DJs and florists out in the, the room right now listening to this webinar, but I want you to imagine you are the event planner on this entire event where, you know, say for example, a photo booth photographer is maybe just thinking about her station over here, this little portion of the event. Actually, when you're taking the exam, I want you to think of the entire event experience from the valet outside to load in doc um, in the back with sound check and the bands, um, every single element is important. So you're gonna have much more of a holistic view and a wider scope of the event experience. And you know when it says here about a SWOT analysis, I want you to really think of what are the strengths of this event, what are the weaknesses in this event, what are the opportunities, and what are the threats? So just to break that down really, really, really quick. Strengths are, what are the cool things that are, are elements of, uh, um, that are really amazing at this event? Oh, we're gonna have, you know, aerialists hung, strung from the ceiling, uh, pouring champagne as people walk in the front door. Um, you know, something that delights the, the sen all five senses, that's in the strengths area. Weaknesses are things that are, are gaps in the event structure that um, are not insurmountable, but things that you need to overcome. Uh, say, for example, the venue is in a high traffic zone and outside, and you need to make sure that you can move people in and out of the venue safely um, and quickly so that there's not a long queue out the door, um, especially if it's like you're in rush hour traffic. You don't want um, the safety of your, of your attendees to be at jeopardy. Opportunities, I like to think is some, you know, the, the ice cream sundae, like can you put a cherry on the top of your ice cream sundae and make it even better? So what's there an opportunity to make it better? Um, that's just really what I map out there. So hey, could the aerialists also, um, I don't know, have their other aerialists there with um, canapes as well? You know, these are the things that are there. Last but not least, threats. Threats are serious. These are things that can completely shut down your event um, right from the get-go, whether that is the weather, 
whether that is terrorism, uh, which I know sounds a bit silly, but in this day and age, it's worth saying out loud. Um, you know, very serious uh, things that could really um, make your event a catastrophe. So I thought I'd just take a moment there just to break down what SWAT is in case you've never actually had anybody break that down. Hopefully that was helpful for you. You guys let me know in the, the little questions or chat box. That'd be great. And of course, the detailed budget for the written exam as well. So you want to think about the budget of the entire event experience, not just one little part of it. So what is the valet cost? What does transportation from point A to point B cost? What does the band, the AV, the food, the, the decor, the beverages, everything, yes, um, it needs to be included in that detailed budget. Great. Anna says, very helpful. Amazing. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. David says, good stuff. Woohoo. Um, all right, great. So that's, that's the exam. And I want you to just be very clear. Four and a half hours is a long time for an exam. And you might be thinking, how in the world are we going to spend that much time? You will spend all of that time on this, this exam. Um, and I'll get into that in just a little bit. But yes, you will spend the, four, the full four and a half hours easily on the exam. And you will leave there with your brain absolutely fried. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> so I left it. I, I called my husband immediately and I was like, I need to have a margarita the size of my head stat. <laughs> and so, yes, it is intense, um, but it is also, if you know your stuff, it will be incredibly gratifying when you pass as well. Okay, great. Um, now, the next question is um, how to set up a thriving CSEP discussion group in your local chapter. Okay, guys, like I said at the very, very beginning of this webinar, do not, Girl Scout Honor, promise me, do not try to study for this exam by yourself. I encourage you to reach out to your um, local chapters, board of directors. Maybe it's your VP of membership or director of membership. Probably would be the best place to start. And I want you to reach out to that person and say, hey, I'm thinking about sitting for my CSEP exam. Do you know anybody else in our local chapter that is also considering um, taking the exam? And if you can all get on the same page, you don't need a lot of people, maybe say three to five people that are going to vow to take the exam in the same exam window all at the same time, then you as a huddle can start to prepare and discuss and study together. And I tell you, there's power in numbers. When you do this work together, it is so much more of a richer experience in the study process to, um, to be prepared for it. So yes, reach out to your VP of membership or your director of membership um, and ask for them to help you facilitate and ask the rest of the membership, like who's taken the CSEP? And it may be as simple as if your local chapter has a private Facebook group, then you can do that asking yourself. You throw it out in the group, see who else is doing it, start to gather names and uh, pull something together. Now let's say your chapter is teeny tiny, right? And you're the only one that's taking the CSEP um, ever in this year or this quarter. I totally get you. I then would encourage you to reach out to other chapters in maybe your same state or country and um, yeah, just see who else is doing it. Because what we're going to talk about with creating a discussion group to be quite frank, you don't actually have to do it in person. That's how I did it. Like we all got together in person around a, a conference table every two weeks and studied together. But there's no reason why you couldn't do that um, virtually using a tool like Google Hangouts or Skype or something like that. Um, so yeah, I, I'd encourage you guys to, um, yeah, to consider that as well. Yeah, Amber says, you know, she's not part of a local chapter. Would I take the same steps? Yeah, you know, if I encourage, I would encourage you, A, you have to be a member of ILEA, so make sure you're a member. Uh, B, uh, if you're not part of a local chapter, like a member at large or something, see what chapters are nearby, reach out to that BPA membership and see if they can start connecting you to other people who are interested in um, sitting for their exam. Last but not least, you also have a great resource uh, at ILEA HQ. 
um, in Tori. So Tori uh, is our HQ um, person who just handles the CSCP stuff. So if you reached out to her as well, she, I bet she would help you at least connect to others that are interested in taking the test. Tori, if you don't mind, could you put your uh, email address in the chat box and let us know what your email address is so I can pass that on to everybody else as well. Hopefully that answered your question there, uh, Amber. Great. Um, cool. So, right. This is the thing. When you're setting up your CSEP discussion group, like I said, you only need about three to five people. That That's just, I would say, at the bare minimum of what you want. And you probably don't want more than, say, 10 in the room. Um, and these are the three core places to really prepare for the CSEP. First and foremost, raise your hand if you've heard of the CSEP content outline. If not, no biggie, I'm about to show it to you. Um, the second thing you need is the Apex Glossary. You could probably buy that on Amazon um, and find that book uh, anywhere. I think the last time I, I bought it, it was right around 10 bucks uh, US dollars. Um, so it's not very expensive whatsoever. And then, like I said, you know, your fellow industry members are a huge resource for um, studying for this test uh, and this exam. All right. So. This is the CSEP content outline. Um, now, this content outline is so genius because it breaks down all the elements of an event in four different phases. So imagine an event. You have the development phase, you have the pre-production phase, you have the production phase, and then the post-production phase. Now, as you can see on this slide here, the development phase is everything happens um, that before the client signs at the dotted line uh, and signs a contract with you as the event producer. So this is all the pre-work that you do, like uh, identifying the goals and objectives of the event, starting to do a SWOT analysis, um, you know, looking at the site requirements at the venue, understanding the scope of work, what's all expected of this event concept, and breaking it all down from there. Now, let me just give you a quick overview of the other three phases. Pre-production is everything that happens from the point where the client signs the contract to um, load-in of the event itself. Um, so that is actually you know, executing vendor contracts and agreements, reassessing your available resources, you know, taking um, good track of your record-keeping procedures, whether that's accounting or project management, um, putting all the pieces together, you know, um, and coordinating the event elements that are required for this event itself. Production is everything that happens from load-in to load-out. Uh, so it's actually executing the event on-site. Um, you know, all those details that goes there. And then obviously post-production is everything that happens post-event. So wrapping all the details up, collecting all the collateral like photos and videos and documentations, um, reconciling and auditing any of the uh, final vendor bills, finances, and presenting a final budget to, back to the client. But also, most importantly, um, which I think sometimes people forget, is truly analyzing and evaluating the entire event management process right from the get-go with the client. So you do all that post work is there as well. Okay, any questions so far on the CSCP uh, uh, content outline? Okay, great. Um, so here's the magic bit, and here's what we figured out when we were creating our discussion group. You take the CSEP content outline and you break it out into sections of six. And when you do that, then you start to map out, right, we as a group need to get together for eight sessions to truly study for this exam. I cannot stress to you highly enough, this CSEP content outline, you must memorize it, like word for word, know how to recite it backwards and forwards, and not just recite it, but like know it and all of the elements. Now, here's one thing that's I think really, really interesting is in our um, discussion group that we did in ILEA Austin many, many, many years ago when I was uh, preparing to take my exam, 
we had a great mix of people sitting around the table. So we had an event producer, we had a rentals person, we had a large scale decor person sitting at the table. Um, and what's great about this is that it's truly a discussion group. And what we would do is we would meet every other week for eight weeks and just talk about those bullet points. So the very, very first session, we just talked about development phase points A through F as a collective around the table. And we, you know, what's good about that is we, we it helps us laser focus in on that session and, and stay targeted um, as, as we are, are learning and growing together. But also it was really helpful. It's like, okay, right, what do we need to know about um, prioritizing goals and objectives with client events? Well, you know, an event producer, a, a corporate event planner is gonna have a very different insight. Oh, well, this is how I do events um, for my clients. This is how we help our clients understand their goals and objectives. And then, you know, the rentals person says, well, this is how we come at it um, and know this. You know, and, and what's also really interesting is that somewhere in the uh, CSEP content outline, there's a bit about like um, protocol and ceremonial needs for, um, you know, dignitaries and government. There it is right there. And, you know, for me personally, I didn't have any experience in this whatsoever. It was fascinating to learn like, okay, which flag goes to the left and the right of the U.S. flag in for U.S. events? Which, you know, how do you um, greet a, a dignitary from Hong Kong? Um, you know, is it a handshake? Is it a bow? All of those things. And it's so fascinating to me. But that's where the beauty of having a group is together. You know, the, the corporate event planner might say, hey, don't forget about this, this, and this. These are really important details on that particular um, point in the thing. And you know what helps is that all of those conversations that we had of those eight sessions we got together, like put little archive files in my brain. And you know, I just like, hmm, that's interesting. Filed that there. Hmm, that's interesting. I filed that there as well. So when it came to exam day, I was like, oh, what did so-and-so say about, you know, how to, um, greet dignitaries uh, and what is the protocol plan or etiquette processes, bah, 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 bah. oh yeah, I'm gonna integrate that into my written exam portion or I'm gonna make sure that that is um, in my short answer stuff. You see the, the beauty of this, it's so amazing. Um, so yes, that's huge to have a group to go through. So what we did is like we broke it out, eight sessions every other week, for one hour and we did it during lunch so we all said right it's a brown bag um, everybody bring your own lunch nothing fancy you know who's got a conference room brilliant let's meet at your office great and then um, mapped it out and a best practice for me personally is set it at the same time every other week so there's like continuity in your schedule um, and it helps you make sure that you attend as well did we go to every single session? Well, I did, but most people, I think, made it to seven uh, sessions and maybe missed one along the way, you know, because of an event or um, something they couldn't get out of. But I tell you, this is solid gold. This is exactly how to um, study for it, in my opinion. All right, any questions on this stuff or can we move on? Um, Bron I'm sorry, Breen Haley Miller, she uh, recommended, or she asked the question, do you suggest the budget include tax and gratuity? Great question. Um, here's my opinion on the budget part for the written exam. Keep it as simple as possible. Don't put numbers like $4,964.32 um, for whatever the thing is. Like round your numbers up. Okay, that's $5,000 for that. Or that's $10,000 for this. Because it allows you to do quick math um, when you're in the testing center itself. So in your head, include your tax um, and you know into your line item for that specific section but round it into a round number hopefully that answers your question and if you are an event producer that pays gratuities on behalf of your client you might actually put that as its own line item down below um, in the actual detailed budget but again simple 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 Hopefully that answered your question there. Uh, David asked the question, can you bring a calculator? Tests make me nervous and I want my math to be on point. David, I totally feel you. I am, I'm good at math, but I'm not good at taking tests. Like, let's just 
put that confessional out there. Um, no, you cannot bring a calculator in. You cannot bring any uh, electronics whatsoever. I think, and Tori, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they actually take your phone and your watch as well. Um, so you, you just come in with yourself uh, and a pencil, and that's literally it. So again, round numbers make it as easy as possible for you. Um, yes, yeah, so Ruth says they give you a pencil and paper. That is it, my friends. <laughs> no mas, nothing more beyond that. Um, and the calculator um, in the, there's a calculator on the computer. Yes, um, however, uh, I found that the calculator on the computer can be very finicky. Now I took my test, um, God knows how many years ago, and hopefully they've overcome that. Um, but I, I remember the calculator, you press and you, you type in numbers into it, and then you press enter and it would forward advance your page on the test. It was super frustrating. So again, hopefully they've fixed that, um, but the calculator, which is on the computer screen, um, was a bit finicky for me. Great. Uh, yes, uh, Armando said he took the test in April and it was still that way. So please, word for the wise, keep your numbers simple. Okay, I mentioned an Apex Glossary. This is the book that I recommend you guys do. This is how we did it. Um, in our group, every single time we came to the table, we said, we're gonna pick five words that we didn't know previously and bring them to the discussion group to review as a collective. So let's say, for example, you're a lighting guy. You know what a parkan is. You know what all these very technical terms are, um, you know, that maybe other people don't know. And so, you know, let's say the catering person's like, I have no clue what a park can is. So no shame, no embarrassment. You just come to the table to your session and say, hey, I have no idea what this word was, but I now know it now. You might be surprised other people don't have a clue. In the Apex Glossary, there's also some really unusual words that I didn't know that are very specific to caterers as well. So again, just go at it um, with the understanding with your group of, hey, we're not going to laugh at each other and, you know, feel embarrassed that we don't know some of these words, but we're going to bring it to the table and say, hey, I learned this new word. This word means blah, blah, blah. Um, you also will find in the Apex Glossary a lot of acronyms as well. So those definitely, I don't know, all the acronyms, all, you know, that are out there uh, for stagehands and riggers and all those things. Um, just flip through the Apex Glossary. Uh, you know, bring them to the collective and share as a group. And what I typically did is I had a highlighter. So every time we went over the words, I would just highlight the word in the book because that just gives me a visual cue that I've actually gone, looked at that word and studied it. So hopefully that helps you guys there as well. Okay, how to be a superhero test taker on the big day. Um, and so I want you to put in the question box if you are a good test taker or not. Put yes if you are, no if you're not. Um, and we'll see as people are, start okay, yeah, I'm starting to see no's pop in. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's pretty evident. You know, I mean, again, that's the truth is that it's been a long while for a lot of us to uh, take a test, like actually sit down, study for a test, um, you know, in a long, long, long while. Um, yes. And so like, this is the thing. <laughs> I highly recommend very first thing that you do to study for the test is be like Kermit here. Right. Like, right, 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 right. And then write a bazillion times more. You know, in the written exam, they ask you questions that, um, you know, like I said, I'm not revealing anything super secret, but there are questions in there that are sample event scenarios. So here's the thing, you guys, you shouldn't be being an event designer and thinking of your sample event scenario on the fly right then going, oh my gosh, if I have an event in Maui, what kind of cool things do I want to have for the entertainment? Oh, I don't know. Should I have a cotton candy machine? Like already have sample event scenarios 
already drafted on in your head and practice writing about them. Like, write, 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 write. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you are like me. Um, I'm not so great at timed <laughs> writing exams. It kind of makes my anxiety levels go ooh, really, really high. So this just helps you get a little bit more experienced and less scared about actually um, taking a written exam and writing stuff down. So yeah, I'm still seeing all of you guys saying, no, I'm not very good at taking exams. I feel you, like I am the same exact way. Denise says she was great in college, but that was a long time ago. Um, yes, totally. Um, and Armando, I see that you're a little bit nervous. Like I'm not here to scare the Jesus out of you guys. Like that, that's not my case. Like honestly, when you get a good discussion group going and you study and you write, 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 then you are going to do just fine. Just fine. Yes. Um, and you know, Ruth just gets a really good point. Um, you know, when you are applying for a local um, awards program, or especially when you're doing your ILEA Esprit Award, you know what that is? That's a whole lot of writing right there. That's exactly what it is. And that's a great way for you to get that writing practice of writing out your um, sample event scenarios and thinking about it in that kind of way. It starts changing and like using a different part of your brain uh, when you do that. So yes, it's totally, um, totally a great way to, to get it. Great, perfect. I hope that I'm setting some, um, honest expectations of what's to come. And I'm, I do hope, again, that I'm not scaring the bejesus out of you guys uh, on it. But yes, right, 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 right. Now, the other thing that I wanted to say is, and here, this, this is sort of giving me anxiety, so <laughs> we go back to, to Kermie here. Um, you know, these are Captain Obvious and very simple things to remember, but when you're, you're prepping for the big day, flashcards are always helpful for those vocabulary. Um, you know, think back on, on how you studied for things, um, but then, you know, get a good night's rest the night before. This is not the time to cram. Be staying up till three o'clock in the morning and taking the test the next morning. Nope. And I know some of you guys might be uh, procrastinators and last minute people like myself. Um, but the truth is, a good night's rest is so important in taking this test. Four and a half hours is a long time to keep your brain super focused on something in particular. So a good night's rest that next morning, I mean, I'm not a nutritionist, but a green smoothie would do you good. Uh, eating a good hearty breakfast, um, you know, being well rested, drinking lots of water, um, going to the bathroom beforehand so you don't <laughs> have an accident. Like all of those things that again are obvious, but don't cram the night before, don't. This is really to test if you know your stuff from a long-term experience of being in the events industry. There's no amount of cramming that is going to, to make you um, great at taking the test. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Um, yes, Jordan asked the question, where can we purchase the Apex Glossary? I'm pretty sure if you searched on um, Amazon, you'd be able to find it there as well. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, if you go to the ileahub.com website and you click on the tab that says education at the very, very top, you'll find CSEP tab. And there is also details, like all the details that I'm talking about today, you can find there, uh, including, um, you know, how to apply, when to apply, the eligibility period, um, how to prepare, all of that is there as well. Great. Perfect. Hopefully that is good. Um, yes, Rosemary offered a um, suggestion, Quizlet, um, which is a kind of like doing online flashcards um, and to help you study. However, I will recommend to you guys is that if you make a deck of um, flashcards for glossary items, make sure that deck is private and not public um, so people can't search those flashcards out in Google and everywhere else, okay? Um, so make sure that they're private just for you. All right, so you've taken the test four and a half hours later, your brain is about to explode, brilliant, and you've gone to get the margarita that's the size of your head, just like myself, or whatever, um, green smoothie afterwards, that's fine. Um, then what happens after that? Well, eventually you find out if you passed or if you failed. Now, can I just be 
deadline honest um, right now. There are lots of people that take the test once and they pass, no problem. And there are also lots of people who take the test the first time and they fail. So I don't want you to get discouraged if that is you, if that happens to you. I highly, highly recommend that you take the test again. Um, and I do understand that the CACP exam is not cheap to sit for. It's, it's a $600 US dollar exam fee to um, take the test. And I realize that's high stakes. That's the reason why I encourage you guys all to truly um, take the time to set up a discussion group take the studying part very seriously and practice writing as much as you humanly possibly can um, because it's a big investment but if you do fail don't be discouraged please 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 my friend reach out to your vp of membership and um, let them know and don't be ashamed of that either and again you know reach out to your local chapter board of gov or board of directors and ask for support because I'm willing to bet there are probably other people that have taken the test in your local chapter and failed as well. Um, but it's a good chance for you to come back and figure out where you need to improve. Um, once you've taken the test, then you are very clear and understanding of what, how it's structured and, and what they're looking for and all that. Um, so please, please, please don't give up. Now, let's say you passed. Woohoo! Congratulations! Um, this, I want to talk about ways to really truly make the most of your CSCP designation once you have got it. Now, I would like to say, I wish I could say, as soon as you get your CSCP, big giant sacks of cash fall from the, the sky and then all of a sudden you're just making seven figures. I'm sorry, friends, that, that's not the reality. <laughs> um, but what you have to do as the newly designated CSEP um, event professional is literally tell the world. I want you to tell the world that you've gotten your designation. And how you do that is sending out a press release to your local media. So if you've got a local newspaper, your radio stations, your TV stations, online, your local business journal. So for example, in Austin, you've got the Austin Business Journal. And if you sent them a press release and got in contact with them um, on their latest news section, they will put that in there because it's a big deal, you guys. Um, and you know, again, it's a it's a process of actually reaching out to people, the media, all of that, and really, really, really letting them know um, that you've now got this thing that you are now a thought leader in your industry and in your city, and that's you know no small piece to to sneeze at. So yes, you have to do a bit of the legwork, but I am willing to go out on a limb and say that I believe Tori, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that the uh, ILEA headquarters does a lot of this heavy lifting for you as well. They'll get you the logo. They will, I think, write up a press release template for you. Um, you know, and really, this is this is it. You're part of an association of global event leaders. And now that you have this designation, make the most of it. Um, don't take that bit um, and let it pass you by. That's such an opportunity. You know, one other thing to consider as well is that with the CACP and behind your name, you now are a thought leader in a lot of core curriculum that ILEA teaches in the association as well. Are you familiar with the core curriculum, you guys? So core curriculum is a thing that ILEA Education Council has developed over the last few years, and it is brilliant in that every single um, monthly workshop, pretty much, that you attend locally, unless it's just a networking event, is theoretically pointing to a core curriculum thing. For example, the, the 10 core curriculums are this, event planning, entertainment, creative services, rentals, tenting, food and beverage, event decor, technical production, speaker management, and venues. So, I would encourage you guys, um, you may or may not know this, but the Education Council is working and rolling out a brand new speaker database for ILEA, as the association as a whole. And you know what? Having that CACP under your name sure does help you get yourself on that speaker's database. 
And, you know, some of you guys are public speakers and some of you, you guys like, mm, no, Mary, that's not for me. And that's absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, when you step up and, and do have this designation, you step into a new echelon of experts and thought leaders in your industry. So there's potential for you to speak at the local chapter level or even at neighboring chapters. Um, so if you're in Austin, maybe this is an opportunity for you to speak at the Houston, Dallas, or San Antonio chapters. You know, really look at this as a way to um, expand your profile as you, the individual, but let's say you own a business. This is a great way to get yourself in front of quite a few other event industry leaders as well um, when you take the stage. So, you know, I highly encourage you guys, um, the CSCP doesn't end there. It really helps you step up into um, more of a leadership, a thought leadership role in the industry as well. Any questions there so far? Now, um, remember, your clients, I'm willing to bet, will have no clue what CSCP means. It's not like it's an MBA where they go, oh, I, I get that. I know what that is. So you might have to educate them on that. But again, a great opportunity. Maybe you get a graphic designer and you set up, you create a collateral piece and you send it out to all of your existing clients, prospects on your list, you name it, anybody on your email list and letting them know, shouting from the rooftops, this is not the time to be shy or, or modest, uh, and letting them know that you've gotten this designation. Remind them that you are one of a very small number in your city, state, or country. Um, again, it's a differentiator between you and somebody else they may be considering for their next event. And this is an excellent way to, you know, Maybe if there's some prospects in your hopper that haven't signed up the dotted line, for them to go, oh, actually, you know what? Jeff, he knows his stuff. I'm definitely booking him. And this is why. This, this tipped me over the edge, and now I know that um, Jeff is the right DJ for me or whatever. So, yeah, this is huge, you guys. Um, don't take that opportunity and let that pass you by. And, you know, again, you get those collateral pieces uh, from Andy at ILEA HQ, um, at least the logo. But, you know, kick that to your graphic designer, put up something nice, whether it's electronic in your next e-newsletter or an actual, you know, direct mail, old-fashioned pop something in the mail for people um, and let people know that you've done this. Uh, and this is a big deal. All right, you guys, um, is there any questions? This is the chance to ask questions. If there's anything that I've gone over too fast or want more clarification on, um, this is the chance to ask. All right, and I'll go through the list as well to see. Um, Tori, if I unmute your line, I'd love to, um, yes, I'd love to have you as well uh, answering some of these questions. If you could unmute yourself, that'd be great. And Hi, everyone. This is Tori from ILEA headquarters. Hooray. Um, all right. So, Tori, one of the first questions came from Chelsea Roy, and her question was, is there a list anywhere that we can look at to see who in our city has their designation. Where can they find that? Hi, Chelsea. Uh, thank you very much for your question. I have a list here at the office. Um, I can email you after this webinar and I can pass along the names of the CSCPs in your area if you'd like. Okay, great. And then Tori, tell us what your email address is again. Yep, my email address is T Klukas, and that's C L U. C A S at IleaHub.com. Okay. So T as in Tom, C as in Cat, L as in Lucas, um, and then I guess U C A S at IleaHub.com. Um, so you guys can, I'll send it to everybody. Hopefully you've gotten that as an email. Um, great. Thank you for answering that. Um, Amber Fitzgerald has a question. With the paper and pencil provided, do we have the option to write the content outline out? Tori, do you know the answer to that question? You know what? That is a great question. I don't have the answer for that offhand, but let me do a little digging and then I will get back to you with more information. Yeah, Amber, I, well, when I took the test years and years and years ago, the answer is yes, you can write, like you get one piece of paper. And so if you get out, get straight in there um, and, and scribble down just some notes for yourself, um, you can do that. 
Um, but I want to make sure really clear that that's not changed since the years and years ago when I took the test. Um, so Amber Fitzgerald, so Tori, if you just want to make a note to follow up with her on that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and then Kimberly asked, is there a specific title for the Apex Glossary? She searched on Amazon, but nothing is showing up. Ah, okay. So Apex Glossary, you can find that online. Um, if you go to Events Council, here, let me um, type that over here. Bear with me. Eventscouncil.org. Let's see if I can type it in here. Can you? Uh, bear with me. Yeah. Let's see. Can you guys see this? Eventscouncil.org forward slash apex forward slash glossary dot ASPS, ASPX. I think what simply you do, if you Googled that, uh, Kim, you could just find it. Apex glossary online, you'll find it at eventscouncil.org forward slash apex. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, great. Um, Breen asked, Breen Miller asked, what is the turnaround time on test results, days and weeks? Tori. Hi, thank you for that question. Um, this is a question I'll get quite a bit. I believe the turnaround time for grading is about 12 to 14 weeks. The exam has to be graded, I believe, three times, and um, so yeah, that's kind of the turnaround time for the test results. Mm -hmm. Great, perfect. Um, and then Armando asked, how often do we need to recertify? That is another great question. Um, I believe it is every five years. If you are unsure about the status of your certification, you can either email me directly or you can email our info at iliahub.com info box and then one of us will be able to check on that for you and provide you with more information. Okay, great. Um, yeah, okay, great. Yes, yes, yes. Events Council, great, thank you. Um, Right. Amber asked the question, in the Apex Glossary, do we need to know the British English style sheet? I don't know. That is a great question, Amber. Do you know, Tori? That is a great question. I think that was probably, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about that one. So I can check in on that and let you know that as well, Amber. It doesn't ring a bell to me, Amber, just so you know. Um, but yeah, I've never even heard of that personally. Uh, Denise asked the question, when you recertify, do you have to sit the whole test again? Oh my gosh, Denise, if that was the truth, I would probably not recertify. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Tori, the answer is no, right? They, they have to do a certain other um, step to recertify. Can you talk them through that? Yeah, that is absolutely correct. We have a little more information on our website to recertify. You definitely do not have to retake the test again. You have to accumulate, I think it's 25 points, and the way you can accumulate those points is also laid out on the website. Um, but yes, you definitely do not have to retake the exam. Yeah, it's way easy. Um, Denise, there's a bit of points, um, and I think once you become a CSCP, um, then you also, you can gain or you earn points by going to industry conferences, but then also t grading tests for other people who have, um, who are taking the CSCP. Um, so yeah, but you don't actually have to sit down and take the test again. All right, are there any final questions um, out there um, for you guys? And this is your chance to ask them anything you're nervous about. Um, this now is the time to ask or otherwise we will cut the webinar off a little bit early. Um, all right, so Amber's got one more question that's coming in the queue. No worries, this fire away. Like, this is literally why I'm here for you guys. Um, right, and then um, Ruth, thank you so much for that. Ruth Wilhoff um, Jones also recommended 
that if anyone would like suggestions on the recertification process, she is more than happy to share her experience as well. Um, you can find Ruth in the ILEA Member Connect private Facebook group. Um, she is very active in there, and you can just simply uh, search for Ruth in that Facebook, that private Facebook group if you're an ILEA member and be able to connect with her as well there. Thank you, Ruth, for that. I really appreciate that. Um, yes, and Ruth is also a member, a current member of the Education Council as well, which is huge. Thank you for what you do there. All right, so Armando asked the question, do you think um, that the April test will be graded before the next deadline for retake? Um, how fast do they, they get the, the tests graded, Tori? Hi, um, thank you, Armando, for submitting that question. I think that they should be. Um, I can definitely go ahead and check to see kind of the status of yours, if that's uh, particular what you're referring to, and I can shoot you an email to let you know where you're at, and if you have any other questions regarding the retake, um, yeah, I'm definitely happy, happy to help with that, too. Yeah, and by the way, for anyone that's watching the replay of this video, this was recorded on June 19th, 2018. Um, yes, so Kyla asks, will the slides or the recording be available later? Yes, hooray! Um, for all of you guys, you're going to get a recording of this video so you can watch uh, from the beginning, Kyla, um, anything that you have missed. Okay, any final, oh, there's one more question. Uh, Amber asked the question, for the written portion, we will receive event scenarios based off of certain sections within the content outline. Given that the answers are brief, we will not be required to write a full event description. Is that a question or a statement? I'm assuming that's a question. Um, I can't really go into very specific details of how, what the question asks or, um, you know, like how much do you write and all of that because we are bound by uh, confidentiality. I can't like just say, well, write this, Amber, and write this specifically. And this is the exact same question that, that they're um, going to ask you. However, how I would answer that question for you is this. Again, remember Kermie, right, 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 right. Have event scenarios already pre-built in your head. Um, for example, a corporate event, a wedding, um, a trade show, um, an outdoor festival, you know, and again, with your event producer hat on, think about all of the details of the event using your magic um, content outline as your, um, your basis of knowledge, right? So you're thinking about budget, you're thinking about SWAT, you're thinking about event design, you're thinking about ground transportation and the marketing plan and the this and the that. You know, so think about all of those details, um, you know, and, and that will help you write very, very quickly those event scenarios out, but making sure you are referencing the content outline in what you write. Um, so that's important because when people are grading the test, they want to see that you actually know your stuff from the content outline, but also they know that you know your stuff as an experienced event professional. So hopefully that answered your question there, Amber. Right, like write more than you think and, and get really used to writing lots of stuff and have the ideas banked in your head before you get into the testing center. Right, Breen asked the question, am I able to sit for the October test as opposed to the July test? So I'm assuming she applied to do the July test by the June 1st deadline. Tori, can she switch switcheroo around? Does she need to email you? Hi, Breen. Uh, thank you very much for that question. I will go ahead and check to see when you submitted your application, and I'll check, too, with our testing provider if you are already in the system. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely move things around if you would prefer to sit in October. So I will look into kind of the status of when you applied and um, when you're marked down right now to take the exam, but we can definitely move you to October if you would prefer. Great. So that's Breen Hallie Miller, um, just for your notes, Tori. Uh, okay. Yeah, no worries. Denise has the question, does the local ILEA chapter set up a person um, who's your mentor when you're preparing for tests? Someone that has already taken the test. Great question, Denise. Um, you know, I highly recommend you talk to all of the CSEPs that are in your local chapter and just start to, um, you know, buddy up with people. Now, again, we are all bound by oath and, and you know, all of that to not 
give you confidential information. We're not going to say, oh, well, there is this question on the multiple choice, and that totally tripped me up, and don't forget to study for this particular word or anything like that. However, they can, just like I've done in this webinar, give you some real general ideas of how to study. Um, I can't stress enough, if you know your CSEB content outline from backwards and forwards, like truly memorize it, truly take the time to go through each and one of those elements and think through what are the best practices when it comes to developing a SWOT analysis? What are the best practices when developing protocol plans for um, dignitaries? What are the best practices for, um, you know, figuring out the decor or risk and safety management of this event. That's where you really truly um, become well prepared. But yes, definitely reach out to your local chapters. I don't think anybody actually automatically buddies you up um, with a mentor, but you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. I personally, if I was you, reach out to your VP of membership um, and ask that question um, and see if they can at least point you to a couple of nice friendly people that will help. Hopefully that helps you. Okay, uh, Amber Fitzgerald asked the question, does ILEA help with job placement or connections after receiving the certification? Um, that I'm aware of, no. Uh, Tori, do you know anything on your side? Hi, um, not that I'm aware of. Let me chat with the team, and if I do have a little more information on that, I'll definitely let you know, but, um, yeah, that's something that I would have to look into. My honest feeling is the answer is no, Amber. This is really where you have to um, do the work and get connected. If you are a member of ILEA um, but haven't really connected or gone to like the monthly meetings um, or really connected with the local um, board, you're really missing out. Um, I find that my ILEA membership is so valuable when I get plugged in. Um, so getting to know the board of directors in your local chapter level, volunteering on committees or task force and just getting involved that way, that is the very best way to, um, you know, be top of mind for people that are hiring and also to make connections and build your network. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're just a brand new member and you're not sure how to plug in, um, you know, don't be even afraid to email the local chapter president. Um, and, you know, they certainly will be pointing you to the right person on their team um, and just say, hey, I, I want to get involved or, hey, I'm sitting for the CCP test um, in six months. Um, who should I talk to first? Uh, and for whatever reason, your chapter president, the email flies by their inbox and they didn't see it. Don't give up go and reach out to that VP of membership um, or director of membership as well. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. All right, more questions coming up. Uh, Denise asks, as an event planner that works in higher education and not the special events industry specifically, would my time and experience still count towards my three years? Tori. I'm guessing yes, but let's have to. I yeah, I believe so. Um, if you'd like, Denise, if you would like to pass it on to me, I can just like take a, a second look at just kind of um, the job description and everything, and then we can chat and kind of um, navigate that um, once I take a look at it, if that works. Yeah, I mean, we've got quite a few members in ILEA all over the world that work at universities and um, colleges that produce like graduation ceremonies and fundraising events and all of that. That's 100% events experience um, in my book. So don't think that'd be an issue, but Denise Rocha, um, definitely reach out to Tori um, and she can take a quite quick look at it and, and let you know either way. But I'm, my gut feeling is yes, it's fine. Um, Chelsea asks, do you get to choose the type of event you write about? Can you choose gala, corporate, wedding? Um, I'm not sure I can answer that either, Chelsea. Uh, Tori, can you answer that? Can we answer that? Or is that part of the secrecy? Do you get to choose the type of event you write about? My initial hunch is probably not. Um, I'm not 100% sure, though. And to be honest, if that is something that I would have the answer to, I'm not sure if that's something that we would be able to communicate outwards. Let me take a second look though. Um, and if I have that information and if I am able to share it with you, I will definitely pass that on, um, but I will follow up with you either way. 
Yeah, um, I don't know the answer to that, Chelsea. Um, however, I would have quite a few scenarios already pre-built and written in your head, in your bank. Um, so think about a gala, think about a corporate, think about a wedding, think about all different types of events and um, have those already prepared uh, in the back of your mind. Which is tricky, I know. If some people are here, they're like, well, I'm only a wedding planner. How do I know what a festival is like? This is really where it's stretching your um, experience level and challenging you. Um, and it's a good thing. Trust me, it's such a good thing to go through this process. So I, I encourage you to do that. Uh, Neela's on the call. Hey, Neela. Yeah, I'm definitely going to see you at Ilea Live. Neela is actually sitting for the CSCP exam in July. You're going to do fine. Study, study, study. Watch the replay of this video. Um, you'll be fine. All right. Um, Amber Fitzgerald says, approximately three years ago um, on the old website, there was a multiple choice and written portion test tutorial provided. She can't find it anymore. Does this exist or not? Um, does this still exist out there, Tori? Hi, great question. Not to my knowledge, I will double check to see if that's something that we still have available. And if it is, I'll chat with the team to see if that's something that we could either um, email to you or put up online. But if it was removed for a specific reason, I will do my best to figure out what that is and let you know. Yeah, Tori is new. So we have, I feel really bad to ask her all these questions. Like she just joined our team um, at the HQ level recently. She's got lots and lots of experience working with certifications for other associations um, around the world. But yes, yeah, so, uh, thank you guys so much for being patient. Tori's doing a good job of <laughs> following up with these questions for you guys uh, when I don't have the answers as well. Um, all right, you guys, I think that is the end of all the questions, unless there are any final thoughts. Um, let me know what you guys thought of today's um, session about CSEP. Again, I hope that I was able to bring some new information to the table that maybe you've not heard before. Um, oh, yes, Neela's got one last question. Um, Neela asks, does the event scenario have to be complex or could we go for a simple event as long as it has all of the content outline elements? How should I answer that question? I think what's at the core and most important is that you can show in a written form that you fully understand the content outline in your writing. And I think it is also incredibly important that you write an answer for every single answer in the written portion. So when you're practicing writing, I want you to actually set a timer for three hours and do the writing all in that three hours because you're gonna, that three hours goes by so fast as you're going through these, these series of questions. Um, and for me personally, it doesn't have to be like, oh my God, that was the most amazing event ever. I've never even heard of an event that amazing. What innovative ideas and things. I think it really just has to come down to, do you understand the content outline um, fully and are able to um, write it on paper? Um, and again, um, was it Ruth earlier or Rosemary that earlier that said, uh, you know, practicing writing by writing your Esprit Award applications or your local chapter awards and submitting your actual real events. That's a perfect way to practice writing about events. Um, and, you know, I, I like to think of using storytelling elements um, when you're a writer because there are other real life humans that are reading this. Um, and it shouldn't just feel like a regurgitation of the content outline, uh, like you're a robot but actually telling the story with all five senses, um, what it is like to be there and experience the event um, and the details that you um, know are critically important to plan, produce, and mitigate any issues um, as the events producer. So hopefully that has answered that question for you, Neela. Um, all right, great. I see a lot of thank yous, good, good, good. I'm so glad that you guys are, um, are, are really getting a lot out of today's webinar. Um, yes, Ruth said, if you look at the Esprit Award application, you want to answer the question, keep it simple and clear, that would definitely be her advice and mine as well. What does the question ask for? Answer it very specifically to that, 
keeping core curriculum and content outline principles in mind, uh, keep it simple and clear uh, when you write it. Okay, guys, pat yourself on the back. You made it through a webinar with Talk CSCP. I would like to ask the question, who here on this call right now live is going to take the test? Just write yes in the question box because I would love to know who here is super excited and are taking the test um, because this is so exciting for you guys. Um, you know, this is really where your career is going to change. If you devote the time, really get um, involved in a discussion group and connected with other local chapter members um, and, and prepare and then take the test, you will be so proud of yourself. And if you fail, I promise you, it is not the end of the world. You pick yourself back up, you take the test again, and then I'm sure you will do great the second time around as well. But yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on today's call. If you've not listened to the Simplifiers podcast, I highly recommend that you do that as well. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, basically anywhere um, you can listen to podcasts online. That's where you can find the Simplifiers. Just search the Simplifiers and find us there. We take topics in business and in life and simplify them, um, just like we took CSCP today, and uh, break it down in simple terms. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for your time today, you guys. And if you have any other question, oh, it's so exciting. Look at all these yeses. Can I just say all of these yeses of people that are going to take the CSEP exam? I see you there. It's very exciting. Amazing. Okay, good. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Um, I will see you at ILEA Live in Denver, August. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever, tag me on any of the social media accounts, Twitter, Facebook, wherever, uh, with the simplifiers uh, as the, the handle. And yeah, shoot me a question. I'm more than happy to point you to Tori or anybody else as a resource so that you are equipped and ready to roll uh, and rock that test. All right, you guys, as always, keep things simple. Talk to you soon. Bye, see you later.